and we have allow health workers to check the hearing status of people in their communities. Before we get to really what the World Health Organization, uh, the message they were trying to send to people, can you kindly explain to people out there who don't know what uh, hearing instrument specialists mean? Can you tell us what do you specialize in and what is, what is your work all about? Okay. Thank you very much. As you heard, I'm Isaac Ohome. Mm -hmm. I'm um, a hearing instrument specialist. Mm -hmm. uh, what this means is that uh, it's an area of just specialization on in terms of uh, hearing, everything to do with hearing sciences. Mm -hmm. So currently in the country, uh, only three of us have been trained as hearing instrument specialists. Mm -hmm. but it's a globally trained uh, profession. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it is done outside the country. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we work hand in hand with the ear, nose and throat doctors, as mm -hmm. well as the audiologists and the audiology technicians mm -hmm. in terms of helping people with their hearing loss and, uh, and balance mm -hmm. and noise in the ears. Okay. Yes. So when we talk about hearing instrument specialists, mm -hmm. um, do we have a specific instrument or what falls under the instrument? So under instrument is any, basically these are medical devices that are used to help with hearing. Mm -hmm. So there could be hearing aids, there could be cochlear implants, mm -hmm. there could be anything that is used in terms of hearing. Mm -hmm. And of course, advising in terms of even the telecare, you know, uh, instruments that are used for hearing. Okay. Anything to do with hearing, any instrument that is medically uh, derived okay. instruments. Uh, so the theme for 2019, the mm -hmm. World Hearing Day, was check your hearing. Yes. So the World Health Organization is basically telling us that whether you've experienced a problem with your hearing, whether you've not, uh, you should make an initiative and go check it. Mm -hmm. So how do we now get to convince people? Because uh, telling someone probably was never had a, a, a challenge mm -hmm. to go and have their ears checked probably they may not take it uh, serious. So what is the importance of has, of every person going to have their hearing checked? Yeah, basically what we are saying is that uh, hearing loss is invisible. Mm -hmm. It's painless and it's something that uh, uh, really affects everybody in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, in essence, it starts slowly. Mm -hmm. It creeps in slowly and it affects the general society mm -hmm. and how you're interacting mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when people are saying they cannot be able to hear well, mm -hmm. when they're asking you to repeat mm -hmm. several times, mm -hmm. it means there's a problem. Okay. And you know, hearing loss basically progresses from just becoming hearing loss, mm -hmm. it becomes hearing impairment. When you are have an impairment, is that you are not able to function properly. Okay. And then you become disabled such that you are not able to function properly. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, you become handicapped. Mm -hmm. And when you are saying you are handicapped, mm -hmm. it means that you cannot connect with the society. Okay. If it is children, they cannot go to normal school because mm -hmm. they can't hear. Mm -hmm. So what the WHO is saying is that the number of people with hearing loss is increasing every other day. Mm -hmm. We are saying currently we have 466 million people in the world with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. and the number projection by 2050, the number will be 950 million. Mm -hmm. Now, in Kenya and countries, especially developing countries like mm -hmm. Kenya, the numbers is unknown because mm -hmm. people are not going to, to hospital to check their hearing. Mm -hmm. People are just at home, they are mm -hmm. withdrawing. Mm -hmm. People with hearing loss, they tend to withdraw mm -hmm. from the rest of the community because mm -hmm. they don't want to ask you every other time, come on, I can't hear you. Okay. You know, those kind of things. So the number is increasing. Mm -hmm. and that's why WHO is urging every, every other person mm -hmm. through the applications that they have launched mm -hmm. that you don't need to go to hospital to check your hearing. Okay. Of course, you have some symptoms. Just download the application mm -hmm. and do the testing at home. Okay. And the application will tell you you have a problem and you'll be, you can basically look for us uh, in the hospital. When we now we're talking about the numbers, mm -hmm. you've said 460 million people mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about people who are totally deaf? Yes. Or are we talking about people who can uh, have minimal okay. hearing? So basically 466 million in the population are people who have already been diagnosed with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. According to Kenya National uh, Society for the Deaf, in mm -hmm. Kenya alone, mm -hmm. the number, you know, some years back was more than 800,000 people with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And that number is increasing. According to a research, a survey that was done, although the results are still preliminary, mm -hmm. close to 7.5% of people with hearing loss 
have already been identified outside, mm -hmm. outside there. Mm -hmm. So you are looking at a prevalence of around 4 to 16 percent, okay. which is a really huge percent of people already with hearing loss. Yeah. And you know the number is really increasing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that we shall talk about that yeah. are predisposing people to hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And you realize is the, the population is big. Mm -hmm. And that's why on the 3rd of March, we have started a journey mm -hmm. together with the World Health Organization to sensitize people and to tell people that if you have a hearing loss, you have there is a solution out there mm -hmm. that you need to to take care of that uh, of your hearing. Okay. Yes. Uh, so now uh, let's talk of cases whereby we find that uh, there there might be two people or three people in a family yes. uh, who have who are suffering from hearing loss. So either yes. someone has challenges, they have to use they they have to use the gadgets that are there to help them hear, hear better, mm -hmm. or totally deaf. Mm -hmm. Can we say that it is an hereditary problem? Is it? Uh, basically, there are so many causes of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Of course, number one, we say there are cases where we can't identify where the hearing loss came from. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that have been found mm -hmm. and they are common that are causing hearing loss. One okay. of them is hereditary. Mm -hmm. If there's a family history of hearing loss, mm -hmm. there are chances that somebody in the family mm -hmm. could have a hearing loss. Okay. Of course, we have infections, which is the other commonest uh, cause of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. People with pus that is discharging from their ears. Mm -hmm. You know, infections like meningitis, mm -hmm. people who have measles, rubella, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the causes of hearing loss, mm -hmm. apart from the fact that it can be hereditary. Mm -hmm. It can run in a family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So now, so talking about check your hearing, mm -hmm. uh, let's say I have used all the, uh, followed all the instructions that have been given by the World Health Organization on the application on how to get to know my problem, mm. and I now know of it. Yes. How now do we control it? Mm -hmm. How do we now rectify oh. the problem that a person mm -hmm. is going to realize that they have? Yeah. So basically what we are saying is that uh, this is a public platform for people just to check their hearing at home. Mm -hmm. And once you find there is a problem with your hearing, mm -hmm. then you need to involve now an expert. Okay. An expert can be an audiologist, can be, you know, like hearing instrument specialist, mm -hmm. can be uh, your ear, nose and throat, mm -hmm. so that we can check exactly what is the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, there are common things that can cause hearing loss, mm -hmm. like wax in the ear. Mm -hmm. Maybe a child who has put something in the ear, like a paper or a foreign body in the ear. Mm -hmm. Those are things that if you go to a local hospital just around you, mm -hmm. then it can be rectified. Okay. You can come back to the society and interact back to the society mm -hmm. with a normal hearing loss. Okay. So we have uh, permanent causes of hearing loss and you know those things that can be removed, mm -hmm. they can be er eradicated. Okay. Things like wax, things like foreign body, mm -hmm. things like infections that can be treated. Mm -hmm. So in essence what we are saying is that there are things that have been identified that can cause hearing loss. Mm -hmm. By doing your own uh, check at home and then you realize there's a problem or even there are other symptoms that we shall talk about that you can identify and say, of course, I can't be able to hear well. Okay. You know, there are some people when you're walking around the, uh, the, the streets, you can't hear a bell mm -hmm. of, a motor, of a bicycle. Mm -hmm. You can't hear in the morning the birds that mm -hmm. are, you know, definitely there's a problem. Mm -hmm. So you need to consult your, you know, local doctor, mm -hmm. especially ENT specialists, audiologists mm -hmm. and the other team members. Okay. Yes. So now, how do, we not, how do we then get to uh, identify or how do I realize that a baby that I have at home uh -huh. or uh, my elder sister or someone around me uh -huh. is suffering from hearing loss? Okay. Because I'm sure that probably for a baby, for mm -hmm. a young person and yeah. an adult, mm -hmm. those are two different cases. So maybe you can deal with each case. Okay. How do we get to tell a child is now uh, losing their... Yeah, yeah. So basically the way hearing is is that uh, for children and infants, mm -hmm. the technology is there, especially infants, newborn, mm -hmm. to detect and identify their hearing loss. Okay. Immediately they are born, mm -hmm. we do some tests mm -hmm. and uh, we identify and tell them whether they have a hearing loss or not. Mm -hmm. And if they have a hearing loss, definitely we follow up. Mm -hmm. Now, the other category is children. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays we are seeing mothers that are coming so late mm -hmm. when the child is not able to speak. Mm -hmm. That's the time they are coming to hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they are coming to hospital, the child is around five years, six years, mm -hmm. which is too late mm -hmm. because they want a child to go to school at that point. Mm -hmm. And they have realized that the child cannot be able to, to talk. Mm -hmm. Now, there are obvious things that you can see from a child and identify and say, for sure my child is not able to hear well. Mm -hmm. One of them is they become so inattentive. Mm -hmm. They are not attentive. Mm -hmm. You tend to repeat or speak louder. Mm -hmm. When you speak loud is when you see them turning around and uh, you know, 
following your conversation. Okay. The other thing is that uh, at home, you know, for adult or older people, mm -hmm. they tend to raise the volume of their televisions or maybe when they're speaking on their phone, mm -hmm. their phone is so loud that if you're sitting next to them, mm -hmm. you'll be able to hear the whole conversation. Okay. Or even when they are talking, they shout. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them will be attentive. There's some gestures they'll give you that they will tell you they are not able to hear. Mm -hmm. And you know, in adults, they, they basically, they'll be able to say by themselves mm -hmm. that I can't be able to hear properly. Mm -hmm. The moment they start saying that, the moment you start repeating words mm -hmm. when you're talking to them, you definitely need your hearing checked. Okay. Yes. Uh, we know that uh, hearing is part of the ENT. It's, yes. It falls under the ENT. Yes. So would you tell us what is the relation mm -hmm. between uh, where we find that there's a deaf person yes. and they may be deaf mm -hmm. and dumb? Okay. What, why, what, what is the relation between the two? Okay. So usually, uh, basically, just to review on uh, the fact that you're saying deaf and dumb, mm -hmm. nowadays you're not using that term. Mm -hmm. We're just saying that these people are challenged. Mm -hmm. They are challenged in terms of hearing. Mm -hmm. Now, the relationship between hearing and speech is one. Mm -hmm. If a child cannot be able to hear, mm -hmm. definitely that child will never be able to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a bucket. Mm -hmm. Every word you give to a child, they will be able to speak it back. Okay. So, number one sign of a child who is not able to speak is that they are not able to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, if they cannot be able to hear throughout their life, they'll never, they'll never be able to speak. Okay. And that is the challenge that you are saying. Mm -hmm. So now, if this child is identified early that has a hearing loss, and then a device like a cochlear implant or a hearing aid is given, mm -hmm. then they will be able to now to perceive the signals of speech, okay. and they will be able to speak back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some most of the children that are, you know, that are deaf down there and they cannot be able to speak, mm -hmm. it's because they, the problem has been not from since their child. Okay. I mean, since they are they're, they're small babies. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that we need to start even checking our children as early as the first time they are born. Mm -hmm. We need to take them to hospital or institutions that can be able to do early identifications and screening of these children. Okay. Yes. Uh, so now what about in cases whereby someone has been born with a very good hearing mm -hmm. and maybe probably at the age of 20 or 22, mm -hmm. this person now starts to lose their, their hearing, hearing and maybe sometimes with people who have now who, who become mm -hmm. uh, like uh, deaf, mm -hmm. but probably like half of their lives they could hear very well. Okay. And also we have the older people. Yes. Uh, people getting at the age of 90, the age of 80, and they start losing their hearing. Yeah, yeah. What are the causes of all these things? So we are saying in essence naturally the mm -hmm. hearing loss we tend to lose our hearing loss naturally. Mm -hmm. By the age of 30 the hearing sort of starts to reduce. Mm -hmm. By the time you're 65 what we call the senior citizen the hearing loss basically the hearing basically goes down. Mm -hmm. By the time you're 90, mm -hmm. not all people, mm -hmm. sometimes it's determined on many factors, mm -hmm. like genetic factors, like how you have been using your hearing before. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have been, uh, you know, clubbing, you've been in, you know, in an industry like the music, uh, the, the matatu industry that is so loud, mm -hmm. and you know the hearing, the way it is, there are small, small hairs inside the hair, mm -hmm. the ear. Mm -hmm. So these ears, they break down when you're exposed to some medications, when exposed to loud sounds and so on okay. so you realize with age your hearing loss will depreciate mm -hmm. but it will depreciate much faster depending on the factors that you have been exposed to mm -hmm. so we are saying that you can lose your hearing at any time mm -hmm. there are people who lose their hearing immediately there are people who get a cold or a viral infection mm -hmm. that affects their hearing and you lose your hearing immediately there are people who basically have fluids behind the ear mm -hmm. and uh, the other question you're asking the relationship between hearing and ENT mm -hmm. you know the the hearing system is so well interconnected mm. with the nose okay. through a tube that is called the Eustachian tube. Mm -hmm. This is the tube that basically balances the air and the pressures between the ear and the nose. Okay. So in between, if you have a cold or a something that is obstructing the nose, it basically it means that even it, the, the middle part of your ear mm -hmm. can get obstructed and accumulate a lot of fluid and basically affect your hearing. Okay. So that's how the connection. So usually uh, conditions that are affecting the nose, conditions that are affecting the throat, they can in essence affect even the ear. Okay. So uh, that's how the interrelation between the ENT and the audiologists and mm -hmm. the people who are practicing hear, hearing sciences are interrelated and they work as a team. Mm -hmm. And the other team members is the speech the pathologist. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can be done as speech the therapist or speech sessions 
without a hearing device. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to hear so for that, for the person who is doing the speech therapist can be able to help you. Okay. So we have those, some of the remedies that uh, we, are, we are improvising, mm -hmm. like the hearing aids, mm -hmm. the, there are different types of hearing aids, there are some that are fitting inside the ear, there are some that are going behind the ear, okay. and then we have the surgically implanted cochlear implants mm -hmm. that can also help with the hearing loss. So we have the team members like the speech therapist, the audiologist, and uh, the ENT that we work together. Okay. Yes. Uh, now, the, the biggest problem right now that mm -hmm. we have is people either on their earphones yes. uh, with listening to very loud music. Yes. We have matatus whereby sometimes you sit in a matatu, the music is too loud mm -hmm. that you can literally feel something mm -hmm. in your ears. Mm -hmm. So what dangers are we exposing ourselves to? Yeah. Because someone may, may think that I'm just having fun. Yes. But where, where, where do we have now to draw the limit and know that these earphones, mm -hmm. as much as we like them, as much as they help us uh, uh, when we want to entertain ourselves, okay. they can also be of danger Access. to us? So basically what you are saying is that uh, hearing loss can come, what you're talking about is the noise-induced hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And we have the two types of noise-induced. There's one we call the occupational, where you are earning your uh, daily, you know, uh, bread from yeah. work. Mm -hmm. And you know, like a plant or operator or mm -hmm. somewhere, mm -hmm or somebody who is working with a, like uh, he's just doing like a miller. Mm -hmm. Those people, it's occupation. This is what you do every yeah. other day. Mm -hmm. So you can be exposed to that noise and it can lead to hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So HRs and institutions like OSHA has come up with measures that you have to do a baseline hearing test for these people. Mm -hmm. They have to have ear protective mechanism like the earplugs or earmuffs so that they are protected. Mm -hmm. And then you have to look at the duration of time that you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. And then now you're talking about the other one, which is the recreational type of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. And in recreational is where now, you know, clubbing comes in, mm -hmm. matatu comes in, mm -hmm. and the earphones that we are using. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can lose your hearing suddenly or slowly, mm -hmm. depending on how much noise you are exposed to. Mm -hmm. Of course nowadays we are glad that NEMA has taken the initiative together with the Ministry of Transport to make sure that uh, there are these legislations are being followed up uh -huh. so that the, the matatus that we are entering in, we are not going to, ex to enjoy the music and at the same time lose our hearing. Mm -hmm. Immediately we leave the, the matatu. Mm -hmm. And of course the other thing that is now common is the duration of time of the earphones. Yes. You see people in walking around with the earphones. Mm -hmm. You see children uh, that are Giving, given homeworks, they are also on, on, um, on, on computers uh, yeah. every time with that. Mm -hmm. Of course, you as a parent, one thing you can do for your children mm -hmm. is that you can set the limit okay. of the volume that they're using. Mm -hmm. And this way you can, there are applications like the Hear Angel. You can download that application and set some password and they will never exceed that volume. Okay. For so adult, uh, okay. W w how often, mm -hmm. as you, uh, because uh, time is really uh, not with us right now, okay. how often should we have our, our, he our hearing checked? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the WHO is saying that once you have this application, just download it and make sure every time there is a change in hearing, mm -hmm. make sure you do that. Mm -hmm. Number two, for people who are working in places that is, are noisy, at least have your check once in a year mm -hmm. or any time there's a change mm -hmm. do your hearing test okay, okay of course if you notice there are some you can't be able to hear properly and people have to repeat words for you to hear mm -hmm. if your television you have to increase the volume of, of your television mm -hmm. and either or your phone or mobile phone mm -hmm. then have your hearing checked mm -hmm. yes. okay thank you very much isaac for really finding time to share with us thank you because i'm quite sure this is very new information to people out there yes. and that is all we hand for you tonight so if you're watching us from a tome you've had frequently have your hearing checked download the application from the world health organization uh, platform and have your hearing checked oftenly you can do it at the comfort of your home thank you very much for being with us my name is patricia moriuki to have yourselves a very good night